Let's talk about average sale price for books specifically. <laughs> But you could apply this to other items as well. So what is the average sale price or ASP if you have been lurking around or participating in various FBA Facebook groups, especially ones for books, you will see from time to time people talk about ASP or average sale price, which refers to the average sale price of your item. So what each item is selling on average across your inventory. And some people will have really high numbers, some will have lower, some will have in the middle, et cetera, it varies. Basically, if you have around 20, a 20 ASP, you, you have a pretty high ASP. If you have way over that, if you have 30, 40, that's ridiculous. You are selling really high priced items. As you probably know, if you sell a book for around $20, $19.95, you get paid, assuming it's a not a huge book uh, in terms of you know weight or, or dimension, you probably get paid around $13. So assuming that you bought the book for, let's say a dollar or less, let's say a dollar, $19.95 sale, you get paid 13 and change. So take a dollar out, so $12 profit minus inbound shipping, depending on how long it sat there. Even if it sat there for a few months, it's only pennies, five, 10, 10 cents. So around $11.50 to $12 profit, pure profit off of one book that sold for $20. So that is over 10 times return on your money, which is why people love books. Why I love books and why so many people love to sell books on Amazon FBA. For a long time, my ASP was around $18. And that's when I was primarily doing books and had started to dabble in VHS and then slowly into CDs. And now that I've gotten more into CDs, my ASP has come down, but not just CDs in general when I'm out sourcing, but because of the bulk buys. So I've made three CD bulk buys and I've sent in 70 the first bulk buy, 125 or so the second, so that's 200. And now I, I finished going through the third bulk buy of CDs, and it's about it's about 80. So that's about 280 total that I'll have in inventory. Well, of course I've sold a lot, but a good amount of those CDs are ranked really low. So therefore they sell very quickly within a few days, a few weeks of hitting the warehouse. And the prices are lower. I'm talking from five to $7. Now, because I got them in bulk, and therefore the price per CD is a little bit less. I don't mind making two bucks off of a CD if it sells really quickly. So that brings my ASP dramatically down. If I'm selling an, uh, a CD for $5, $5, $7, then clearly that $18 ASP is gonna come way down, which it has. I looked at my sales a couple days ago for May and my ASP was $12 and change, which is the lowest it's ever been. Should I be freaking out? Should I change my strategy? Is my business going down the drain? No, no, no. This is based on me going out and finding these CD bulk buys, which overall are making great profit. The second CD bulk buy, I've now sold over $70 worth of CDs, and I spent, I believe, was it 140? Yeah, 140. So I'm a little over halfway there, uh, just off of selling not that many CDs, considering I sent in about 125. So I'll be in the profit soon. And also these CDs will keep selling every month. And, and especially in the holidays, the ones that did not sell quickly, a lot of them are gonna sell during the holidays. There are some high priced ones in there. It's just overall, there are, there are a lot more that bring my ASP down and that do not pay as much profit, but I still make profit. If I were to solely focus on books, my ASP would likely come up. Although I have changed my strategy a bit on books, I do not pass, or I look at, at fiction, for instance, because I typically find uh, lower ranked, quick moving books uh, in fiction. And the profit is less, but because I can get them for 50 cents to a dollar, frequently for 50 cents because they're small paperbacks, I can still make three or four dollars profit off of those, even though they're selling for nine, ten dollars. ASP, it just refers to how much you're selling per book. So either you're pricing your items higher or you're legitimately finding books that all the prices are, FBA prices are legitimately higher and will sell for those on average, let's say $20 or more. So if you're finding a lot of textbooks, school books, scholarly books, just more valuable books in general, if you have good sources for that, especially if you're focused on, on school books, 
then clearly your ASP is going to be higher. I've seen a guy have an ASP as high as $42, but he gets tons of textbooks and school-related books. I do not, as of now or yet, have a resource that where I can steadily get these higher-priced books. As I've always said, as I'm out there sourcing, I find very valuable books. Like I sold a textbook for $121. I've, I found that big lot last year, about October, of computer books that were mostly newer and selling for big money, and I sold one for $160. They're still selling, I sold the majority of it, probably like 70% of those books I've sold already. And there's many other books that I come across that are valuable. So I find books a lot that are going for over $20. And I frequently find books that are going, over, going between $40 and $60. So I find them at thrift stores, I find them at estate sales, I find them at garage sales, and I don't go to as many book sales, but they're there as well. I don't have these sources to find mostly books that are priced over 30 or $40, or at least over $20, but books in general are so good, there's so many, and they're so abundant, that I find valuable ones all the time. But I'm not gonna pass on the faster moving books and CDs. When I'm out there sourcing for CDs, usually they're a dollar, I'm usually gonna look for more valuable CDs that are going for $10 and up hopefully much more, but I'm not gonna go for the ones that are selling for $6. Unless it's sell, gonna sell really fast, it's ranked under 10,000, which I just don't find out uh, in thrift stores or, or much of anywhere, really. How important is a high or higher ASP? It depends on who you're talking to, really, and what your strategy is, or how much time you have, etc. Some people who prefer a higher ASP will break it down hourly and say, well, the higher the ASP, the more you make per hour, and I hate that argument. Um, just to put it out there, and they'll say, well, but I, I get less books, but I make more money per book, so that's a good thing. I've seen one person who's full-time who I saw their ASP was lower than mine currently, 11-something, and I think they had said that they wanted to increase it, but that they basically are sending in everything that they can make money on and doing lots and lots of quantity. So sometimes people will show their numbers, and one person that had a higher ASP sold less books, but had the same amount of gross sales as the person that sold more books. So to me, that, that just says that the person that sold less books but had a higher ASP has better sources. Now, maybe they spent time trying to find those sources and built those up over the years, which is great, with the intention of doing that so that the only books they send in are ones that are over a certain dollar amount, let's say $15, $20, $25, whatever it is, that they will not send in a $12, $13, $14, $10 dollar book, whereas other person will send in an $8 book, $7.95 book, $9.95 book, $11.95, maybe even a $6.50 book, as long as it sells fast, I would assume. Maybe the second person doesn't have as many quality sources or sources for higher priced books. It might have to do with where you live, how close you are to universities, or how good you are at finding these sources. Do you network? Do you talk? Do you build relationships? with the right people that would have these types of books. It's all other aspects of FBA and how serious and big and consistent do you want it to grow so you can do less work so people call you. Even if you're not having a lot of people call you, maybe you just happen to live in a region, an area within, let's say, 100 miles of you. There's a ton of great quality thrift stores, lots of people doing yard sales and estate sales. I have tons of yard sales and tons of estate sales in my area and lots and lots of thrift stores. So I have access to a wide variety of books and other items, so that's why I'm finding pretty consistently high-priced books. But I don't have a couple of sources where they only give me high-priced books, and I don't eschew all of the lower-priced books just because I want to send in only higher-priced books. And that's where I am. I'm not going to pass up a book that I can make 2 to $4 profit after everything else that's gonna sell quickly just to send in higher priced books. But that's me, everyone has a different strategy. I wanna send in profit, profitable books. If the book is gonna sell for, let's say, $8.95 to $9.95, and it's gonna take six months to sell, then I probably don't wanna send that in because I wanna get that money quicker. Those books that sell under $10, for the most part, I want those to sell faster. Unless I'm getting them for 25 cents a book, five cents a book, something crazy like that, then I'm willing to sit on it a little bit longer because there's much more profit that I can pull out of it. So for me, having a high ASP would be great, 
but I, I want to send in everything because I want to profit. Some people might say, yeah, but then how long does it take you to process those other books and CDs and whatnot that make you lower profits? That time could be spent doing X, Y, and Z, but that's not how it works. I have time to source, so I buy everything that's profitable. Then I have time to list, so I list what I have. The time that I have to list is not time to go sourcing. So it makes no sense. That argument to me makes no sense. Profit is what makes sense to me. Would I rather have one book that sells for $100 versus 10 books that sell for $10 each? Yes, because the fees would be less for the $100 book, of course. But what if I'm at a, a, a thrift store, let's say, and I find 10, $10 books, but I don't find one $100 book? Do I just leave the 10, $10 books on the shelf and walk away with, let's say, you know, $60, $70 less profit just because I'm sticking to my high ASP? That makes no sense to me. So, so then you would make zero money off of those 10 books because I didn't find the, the $100 book or uh, I would make whatever it would be, $60, $70 off of those 10 books that are not going to take me that much work. As long as there's not a ton of crap on the book and it doesn't take me forever to clean them, as long as I just have to go home, list them, stick them in a box, we'll put a sticker on them and put them in a box and ship them out, it's not that much work. So it makes no sense to me. The argument is, that argument is silly uh, and illogical because when do you ever find, that's just a random, uh, a random argument. When do you find a $100 book and 10, $10 books at the same location? Never. Well, I'd rather... Yeah, but that never happens. So don't use that argument. If I find a $100 book for a dollar and 10 $10 books for a dollar each, so that's $10, am I going to say, no, I don't want that extra 60 or 70 bucks. I just want this $80 here. Instead, I could have another 60 $70, but I'm not going to do that because that's just too much work, even though it's not. It's hardly anything. So that makes no sense to me, and I'm still baffled to this day about it. If you're limited t in time to list, or you just don't want to do it, or you don't like it, okay, maybe. Or, or this, you don't need that much money, and you, you're willing to give away $60, $70 to do less work, okay, that's fine. Whatever reason it is. You want to make just a little bit extra money for this, that, and the other, okay, that's fine. But the argument doesn't make sense, excluding that re rationale and that reasoning. It doesn't make sense to me because you don't find one $100 book and, and 10 $10 books at the same place. You just don't. And if you do, why would you pass it up? Having a high, high ASP is awesome. If you do consistently have a high ASP, I applaud you because you clearly, it's not like you're a great sourcer. It's that you have great sources. You're finding valuable books or and or you're finding valuable books and you're also not sending in lower priced books, which means that you are going to make less money, but you're not going to work as much, but that you do still have to work as much if you don't have great sources because you only are finding the books. So you look through 200 books and you only pull out 15 versus, you know, because they're all over, let's say $15, $20, you only pull out 15 books out of 200. You still did the same amount of work versus someone that pulled out, let's say, 30, 35 books who also went through all the books, but they kept the lower priced books. So the person that kept the lower priced books is going to make more money. Might, it'll take them a little bit more time to list, but it shouldn't take that much more time to list, to put the stickers on the books, put them in the box, double the amount of work, but not really, but maybe, but you make more money. It's up to you. You, you have to decide. I want to build up consistent sales and I want to make a certain amount of sales per day, a certain amount of sales per month. 10 plus sales a day is great, even if it's a lower ASP. Um, I'm still going to find good books. I'm still looking for great books for high, I should say, I'm looking for profitable books, high ASP books <laughs> uh, always, and I find them, but I'm not going to turn away other lower priced books that sell faster and I'll give me my money back quicker. I just want to talk about ASP because some people might be curious about it, whether how important it is, and it depends on your perspective, really. And some will disagree with me, some will agree, some will half agree or disagree, and that's fine because that's the great thing about doing this business. You can do it your way, how you want to do it. If you want to focus on only higher priced books for whatever reason, then you can do it. And that's up to you, it's your prerogative. Or if you want to do everything, 
the lower price, the mid price, the high price, you can do that as well. Whatever your strategy is, whatever works for you, whatever makes sense for your budget, whatever makes sense for your time, for your energy, for your interest. So that's the great thing about FBA is you can build it how you want it. So with all of that being said, I hope you had a great Monday, uh, Memorial Day. Hope you had a great Monday. Probably had it off if you have a job. Maybe you can do some sourcing on Monday, not sure. <laughs> if the thrift stores are open, uh, they might not be. But uh, maybe you can do some, get some shipping done or listing or whatever. I know I have lots of listing to do. But as always, remember, keep booking. Mm -hmm.